Acts in the, the Bible. And we can mention many times that, you know, in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he operated under the influence of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Bible tells us he had the Spirit without living. So when the Bible starts to tell us about incidents in the life of Jesus, for instance, the woman at the well, Jesus actually said to her, you were right in saying that you haven't a husband, in fact, you've had five of them. Jesus was operating there under the word of knowledge. He was revealing the past or a present situation. When Jesus said to Nathaniel, I saw you while you was under the fig tree, he again is operating in the word of knowledge. So the word of knowledge, I've mentioned it many, many times, often speaks of the past or a present situation. And God will reveal that to move you into what he wants to do. And a couple of the things that the Lord has shown me just as we were worshipping, that if you're a person here today, see God's not just interested in dealing with the major issues in your life, he's interested in doing the little nitty gritties that you think that he's not bothered about. And God just spoke to me about scalp conditions. If you've got a scalp condition, you know, you don't need uh, you, anti-dandruff, whatever, God will heal you, God will restore you. That scalp condition can be anything from a sore head, you know, it can be any complaint at all. God wants to heal that and restore that. And maybe that's you today. And God also spoke to me just something simple about skin tags. He will remove them. Let me tell you something. Many years ago, I had a wart that grew. And so I spoke to the wart. I said, wart, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to wither and die. The next day, that wart remained the same. So I spoke to it again and said, you wither and die, I laugh at you, you are dead, ha, in Jesus' name. The day after, it was black. The day after that, it fell off, new skin underneath it. What I'm saying that God gives you power, God gives you authority to deal with issues. So when God speaks into your life, he wants to heal and he wants to restore you. And so you come at the end of the meeting with those issues, God will start to remove those things from your life. We've got to trust in a supernatural God, a God that moves in power today. You see, I'm looking around now, I'm seeing many, many people that are disturbed by what they're seeing in our nations. We're living in a, a nation that seems to be broken. Everything seems to be failing. But you know, when you think about it, People in France are not bothered about what's going on in the UK. People in Belgium are unconcerned about what's going on in the UK because they're from a different kingdom. And you are from a different kingdom. And so you're going to be someone that embraces the words of Jesus where he says, do not be anxious about anything but trust in him. And if you would trust in him, he will supply all your needs according to his glories and riches in Christ Jesus, not according to your bank account, not according to your income, not according to your doctor's availability of antibiotics. Is the one that will heal you, is the one that will restore you, because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He wants to move in power within your life. I'm going to read the scriptures to you this morning, just one simple verse. It's speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's from Acts chapter 3 and verse 21. It says, He must remain in heaven until the time comes for God to restore everything as he has promised long ago through the holy prophets. And God will bless his word to us this morning. You know when a person is actually born again of the Spirit of God, God himself deposits his life his nature, his character within you. You actually become a brand new creature, a brand new being. But this is only the beginnings, really, of a much greater process of God's full salvation, which you can grow into, you can develop into, as you lean upon the person of the Holy Spirit, and as you encounter the supernatural of God. Every encounter with God is to cause you to progress and become the person that he's destined you to be. You see, when God created man, and he formed him from the dirt or the dust of the ground, the Bible says that he actually breathed into him his very breath, and man became a living being. God created man, really, to embrace two worlds, two realms, earth and heaven. 
And the reason for this is because God always wanted or intended that we would actually bring those two realms together and nothing has changed. That's why people talk about bringing heaven to earth. What people call the Lord's Prayer, where they pray, your kingdom be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants those two realms to come together. So we are to partner with the Lord Jesus Christ to see his kingdom established on earth. The problem has been that many believers, once they are saved, live according to religious or church culture. They adopt a lesser lifestyle than the lifestyle that is legally theirs or they're legally entitled to. And that's kingdom lifestyle. That's supernatural lifestyle that God wants you to embrace. That's godly and holy lifestyle. When the children of Israel were in Egypt, the Bible tells us, they were in that place for approximately 400 years. They were in captivity in Egypt. That means that to some degree, they would have been influenced by that culture. They would have adopted certain traits. They would have believed certain things, acted in certain ways because the culture influenced them. So not only was it a case of God bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt, he had to get Egypt out of them. And God is still working today to get much of the world out of the people of God. We're from a different kingdom. We belong to a different kingdom. Therefore, we've got to allow God to work in our life that his kingdom is truly established within us and it starts to show. So God started a process of changing the way they lived, the way from the way they previously lived. And he started to introduce culture, a different culture, a culture that originated within this heaven's culture and is the world's culture. But God wants you to embrace heaven's culture. And so God called a man called Moses and God told Moses to come up that mountain. You know when Moses encountered the living God? The Bible tells us that God gave him laws, God gave him precepts, God gave him ordinances. And the reason the children of Israel were to embrace that, because God was showing them a culture that came from him, a way to live that was different. Even when God told Moses how to lay out the camp of Israel with the tabernacle of God at the center, God was really showing them that he is to be the center of every person's life today. He wants to be center. So God was introducing Israel to a new culture a supernatural culture directly from his glory and his presence was central to everything that they did his presence was central to the people showing them that god is not far from any person today you know even if you don't know the lord jesus christ today you will want prayer away from encountering him and god wants you to be born again listen we're in a world today that has many different cultures that are influencing. Listen, you go on the internet, you have people who are called influencers because they have the power of influence over young people. They have the power of influence on what people buy, what people don't buy. They have influence on what you watch. But God wants you to be influenced by his culture, by what his word says, and start to live that life out. We've got to start to embrace kingdom culture and not a culture of the world and the problem has been even today many believers are influenced by that culture so god was introducing israel to a different culture a new culture supernatural culture showing them that he was there in his presence he was central now collectively folks we've got to understand that as a church we are supposed to be people that represent the Lord Jesus Christ or represent him to the people, those that have never seen him, those that have never encountered him. Because we're living in a generation today that have abandoned God. There's no room for God in many people's lives today. They think God is irrelevant. Well, God isn't irrelevant. He wants to break through into people's lives. You can't have God just on your terms. He wants to be all in your life. We've got to take the full package and live the way that he wants. So collectively, we're supposed to really represent the Lord Jesus Christ, to show his kingdom to people around us. That's why the Bible calls you an ambassador. Doesn't an ambassador represent a particular country or a kingdom? 
He has the full backing of that kingdom. And you have the full backing of heaven. Many, many Christians today, their lifestyle is not attractive to others. They're no different than other religions in the world because they've just embraced a worldly culture. And God wants you to embrace a kingdom culture to realize you are different than other people. We just show the truth in a world that's embracing the false. We just show the real truth of God's word. And part of showing that truth of God's word is embracing that culture where you're moving that supernatural lifestyle. Jesus said, he who believes in me will do the same things I have been doing. They will do even greater things. When was the last time you did anything that you saw Jesus Christ doing with the word of God? You see, I know that if Jesus says you can do it, then he will empower you to do it. Not in your own strength, not in your own ability, but his ability flowing through you. So he heals people today. He restores people today. He delivers people. He will remove that anxiety from you that tablets just can try to control. He removes depression and heaviness from you. He's a miracle working God. There is nothing impossible for him. But you've got to embrace that kingdom lifestyle. You've got to want that kingdom lifestyle. The great thing about God is he does change you from the inside out. So your mannerisms, your behaviour patterns become different. That's what culture is, isn't it? It's about people. Culture, if someone was explaining culture, it's about people having certain belief systems, certain behaviours. And we're going to be people that have behaviour that is different than those around us. Why do many believers today still embrace a culture and a behaviour that is of the world. You see, when I was born again in the Spirit of God, God removed swearing language from my life instantaneously. I didn't have to practice not swearing. I had a mouth like a sewer. He changed it because what he was doing was taking the filth out of my mouth and putting glory in. He changed me from the inside because he changed my heart. What was in my heart started to flow out. Doesn't the word of God say, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks? Amen. So if you're speaking bad language, even as a believer, you know, you might be okay on a Sunday morning, but you're getting work on a Monday, and you start speaking that bad language, that's what's in your heart. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's going to be changed. If you're a complainer, that's coming from your heart. Complaints about things, moaning and groaning, never being satisfied is the condition of the heart and it will express itself. And the world look at you and think you are no different than we are, why should we embrace your God? But when they start to see that you are different, that you live a lifestyle, when people come to you and say, why are you different from the rest? You have the, the right to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. When you encounter people with sicknesses, ailments and problems, you to minister the, the, the truth of God's word into their life and eradicate those things that are affecting their bodies. This happens. I see many people touched when I pray for them on the street. In fact, if I pray for someone on the street who's a non-believer, there's never, not, none of them have never been touched. I've seen grown men cry on that street. Some shake under the power of God and say, what are you doing to men? It's not me doing anything to them. It's Jesus Christ just simply working through because he's an expression of who he is. And God wants to express himself through you. But you're going to be open to that. You can't settle for what you've got right now. As a believer, you should be progressing, growing, developing in the things of God, encountering the supernatural of God. Jesus Christ himself was not only our benchmark, he was the forerunner of who you should be. So you model yourself on Jesus Christ, not on your old church tradition. Look, I was brought up in a church tradition. I found it absolutely boring. There was nothing worse than watch the clock while I was there. Count the numbers on the hymns that were on the wall. Every way you can, add them up, divide them. Everything that you, you could do to pass that time, I found it absolutely boring. But when I was born again of the Spirit of God, I have never had a boring day. Because he changes you. <coughs> and I know this, that not only does he want to change you, 
He wants to break those things that are affecting your life today and affecting the way you think. You've got to think kingdom minded and not think worldly minded or the culture that we're in. But the Bible says if you love the world, the love of Christ isn't in you. Mm -hmm. If you love the things of the world, if you're engrossed in the things of the world, there's a major problem. You know, I see people on Facebook. And you know when people want to befriend you on Facebook, you make a friend request. What I tend to do is I look at their profile. I look at their profile and I think, this person says nothing about Jesus Christ. In fact, I look at their profile and I think, you know what? All they're talking about is money. They've got an issue. They're not, they're not a friend. I look at their followers. If I look at their followers, and it's a man, I'd say, it's all women in bikinis. <laughs> you defriend them. They don't become your friend. Because how can I be friends with someone who has got one foot in the world? Bad company corrupts good character. You've got to embrace kingdom life. Those who walk with the wise become wise. I want people who can lift me up, people who can encourage me. Not people that will pull you down. And sometimes people want to befriend you just for what they can get from you. And so we've got to be people that are different. And there's so many believers. Unfortunately to say, many people in the African culture are pursuing money. It's probably because they've never had it over the years. So they pursue it. You can be a, a lover of money, have a love of money, when you've not got money, and when you've got money. We've got to be people, as the Bible says, to be content in all circumstances, instead of pursuing these other things. And so when I get these requests, they always go, they always talk about money. What is wrong with them? It's because they've embraced, embraced a worldly culture, not a kingdom culture. I look at it this way, if I serve the living God, if I take care of what he wants me to take care of, he will take care of my business. Right. I take care of his business, he takes care of my business. Oh. I choose to live a life for him, he will choose to demonstrate his life through me. He will provide my needs. Oh. We've got to be people that change the way we think. Many Christians today are suffering from anxiety. I bump into Christians and they tell me they've got a counsellor. You need to have the wonderful counsellor within your life. They'll tell me they've seen a psychiatrist. Why is a Christian seen a psychiatrist? Why? Why does a believer need pills to get them going in the morning and pills to calm them down at night? They need to trust in the gospel, if anything. And that's just a play on words, but they need to trust in the power of God's word. God's word is still the power of salvation for all who believe. And that salvation is, the Greek word is so, so, it's wholeness. It caters for your every need. We've got to embrace that type of culture and be different than we are right now. And not just settle, cruising through life, thinking, well, when I get to heaven, everything's going to change. The moment you were born again, you belong to that kingdom, you're just serving God in a different place. That's all. This is why I've said to people, when people die, the amazing thing is this, they're alive, but just in a different place. And if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, they're in the best possible place. If they put in their faith in a different religion, they're going to be in the wrong place, even though they've been sincere in that. Because Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. In other words, I'm the only way. It's not multiple choice. It's not about you being a good person. Good works will not get you into heaven. That's right. Because if you think good works get you into heaven, you are paying the price yourself. You're trying to achieve it yourself. It's by grace mm. through the Lord Jesus Christ. And his grace has been extended to you so you can live the life that God intended you to, to live. We influence by culture. You just look at people like Greta Thunberg talking about the environment, etc. You know, when God created this world, he placed within this world every resource we would ever need, ever need until he comes again. 
And often what we're trying to do, save the planet, we're trying to become saviors. We're taking the place of God. What needs to take place is a move of God in this nation. The only thing this nation needs is not a new government. It needs to repent and turn back to the living God and live by godly standards and allow his kingdom, his culture to be seen. But the amazing thing is this, we've got to demonstrate that culture to people around us. We're going to bring the kingdom culture into every environment that we enter into. So we enter into a workplace where all your colleagues are, you're bringing something of the presence of God in. You're starting to change that environment for your presence. Listen, I worked in a, a, a British aerospace, as many of you know. And when I applied for a particular job there, I got the job, but then they came to me and said, we want you to work in a different uh, department in that place. And this department was the most hostile, the most militant department in Britain. It was notorious. <laughs> and God put me in that place. I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be the grace of God to go in that place. But within months, change started to take place because you know why? I'd walk that place and pray. I would apply godly principles in the way that I dealt with the people. And God started to change that place. And in no time, that place was turned around. The atmosphere was changed. I said this to you before. When I left that place, there was grown men crying. They said, we've met many people, but not someone who's had an impression upon our life like you. We to leave an impression. You can't walk on the snow without leaving an impression. You know someone's been there. One of my granddaughters came round for a lift last week for school because she saw the car there. Unknown to her, we'd walk to church. <laughs> and she says, when I got to the car, I seen the footprints going away from the house, but not coming back. So she knew we weren't in. How did she know that there was an impression left? You have got to be a person that leaves an impression. Are you going to go through life and leave no impression at all? And that's not many a lie. You only have to go to a funeral service to wear that. We're going to be people that leave an impression by living a godly life and doing the things that Jesus did. And that means embracing the supernatural life of God. There's many believers today who are leaving it for everybody else. Wasn't that the problem with the children of Israel? When God wanted them all to come up that mountain and embrace them, they said, Moses, you go up and speak on our behalf. We want other people to do it for us instead of living the life that God wants us to live. There's not a problem that you can't turn around when you speak into that situation. Jesus ministered continually through faith command. You will not find an incident in the word of God where Jesus prayed about that situation in public. He didn't do that. He said, pick up your mat and walk. All his praying was done behind the scene when he spent time in the presence of God. And there needs to be a revival in our land, but first there needs to be a revival amongst the people of God in prayer. Everyone will say amen to that. Everyone will talk about the importance of prayer. They'll put all the folk posts on Facebook, all these tremendous radical sayings, but not live the life. The sayings don't back up their lives. I see people that say amazing things on Facebook. I think it doesn't quite suit the lifestyle they're living. We need to be people that live the life that God has called us to do. And he empowers you to live that life. So there's not a problem that you face that you can't go through with him. Jesus never said you wouldn't have problems. He said in this world you will have problems. But take out of overcome the world. So in him, you overcome, you go through the problem, through the difficulty, and you come out triumphant. That's the lifestyle he wants you to embrace. Are you willing to embrace that lifestyle? Are you willing to speak of the culture of the kingdom of God? That's what God is looking for today. So we've got to embrace the culture that God has and introduce it. The systems that God is showing us in his word of how to live. If we start to look at our cities today, we don't see kingdom culture. We see something else that is different. We see other influences upon the place that we're living in. You only have to go down to Manchester 
And you can clearly see the influence upon our city. Look at our schools, how they're being influenced now. There's lots of influence that comes from LGBT. Lots of promotion of that lifestyle. But that lifestyle is contrary to the word of God. It's very, very clear. In fact, all the nonsense they talk is simply because of a judgment of God. Because in Romans chapter 1, God says, I will give them over to a retrobate or a deprived mind. So they all say the same things, think the same way, and think that's right. And God uses that judgment because of sexual sin. Women in flame for lust for other women. Men in flame for other men. It's not right before God, but everybody remains quiet. But kingdom culture is very simple. Listen, I look at it this way. How confused are people sexually because of the culture that is being portrayed to them? Young people, they don't know if they're a boy or a girl these days. And you have people that are homosexuals that are attracted to other men. People that are lesbians that are attracted to other women. You have transvestites that like to dress up as the opposite sex. You have transgenders who, who are genetically modified or chemically modified. You have the non-binary people that are saying that we need for anything. You know, you have the people that, you know, go with the flow. They can be anything on any particular day. It's all confusing. But God just simply says, when I created man, male and female, I created them. Amen. How simple is that? And even the chemistry, even the science. You remember a year or so ago, they were all telling us, listen to the science. Even the science will tell you, you have 23 chromosomes in your body, 23 sets or pairs. And the 23rd set is the set chromosome. When a woman conceives a child, it's very, very clear the woman always furnishes that child with an X chromosome. A man can give that child an X or a Y. XX, woman, XY, man. Easy as that. Nothing in between. And yet, all the wise people today are telling you these many, many different sexes. Wow. That's a culture. And it's not kingdom culture. Kingdom culture is to stand for truth, to speak truth, and to demonstrate the power of God. Absolutely. When you start to hear a government saying, oh, you can't pray for people in these situations, conversion therapy. The only conversion therapy I know of is when a person is born again. Amen. A person that is homosexual and gets set free, that's deliverance from a demonic power. Amen. And that is absolutely true. There's no way a government can restrict the power of God. Amen. And you've got to stand for the truth of God's word. But you've got to live it as well. You've got to embrace that culture. All we're being told today about various things, all coming at you from different directions, are all to do with a different kingdom, a different culture, and are not the kingdom of God. When we get on to all your clean energies and saving the planet, you know the word of God actually tells us, it actually tells us that creation itself Romans chapter 8, creation itself is, is groaning for the sons of God to be revealed. It's almost like the creation remembers what it was like before the fall of man and is longing for that to be restored. And God wants us to be people that speak truth in those particular areas. It's easy to believe that every problem we have is due to climate change to believe the words of Jesus that would say, in the last days, there will be terrible times. In the last days, there will be weather systems, pestilence, think earthquakes on the increase. All these things changing, the words of Jesus spoke. But it's easy to say the climate control because you can keep Jesus out of the equation. We're going to be people that bring Jesus Christ into the equation of everything that we do today. It's going to be the center of your life. The children of Israel will be in taught. There's the tabernacle of God. There's the tent of meeting. Anyone can embrace it. It was central to their life. It's going to be central to your life today. And God supernaturally provided for those that served him. 
and you will do exactly the same. You know, the children of Israel never went through sicknesses and diseases except when they moved into sin. Now, that people came out of Egypt and the Bible says there was no feeble amongst them. No children with earache, no lay, no sicknesses, no people, I can't get out of bed today, I'm period pains. None of those things affected them. They all came out. And God started to change the way they thought, the way they acted. And that's what God is looking for today. So the Bible tells us to come out of the world. What does it mean by that? You can't leave the world except when you go on to glory. He's talking not to embrace those things, not to believe their views, their ideas, their philosophies, but allow God to shape your life. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word of God. So don't you get your mind renewed by reading the word of God under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And it will start to make a difference in your life. We've got to embrace that life. We've got to be the people that God's intended us to be. <coughs> and move in the power that he wants. Because the kingdom of God is not just about talk. The Bible makes that very, very clear. It's about demonstrating that God is real. Can you imagine it? Having a number of the religious systems today, a number of their representatives in one room, and you know, a Muslim telling you that his way is right, a Jew telling you his way is right, a Christian telling you his way is right. How do you know which way is right? Demonstration of power. The power of the gospel. I've talked to people upon the street that have debated this with me, and I said, oh, they've said to me, how do you know that your way is right? I said, I'll pray for you right now when you feel the presence and the power of God. And God never lets you down. Amen. I've told you before, I've been to, to Africa many, many times. I've stood on platforms there and I've told the people that Jesus Christ doesn't heal you like a wall. And he will restore you. And they come out and they receive from the living God. Muslims taking their cap off and giving their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Walking out from amongst a crowd of other Muslim men and surrendering their life to Jesus. They may think it's a death sentence, but I'll tell you what, it's a pardon and it's life that he's given them. Amen. It's the best life to embrace. But they see the demonstration of the power of the gospel, so it's not just, just words. We've got to start to live that life. You're a powerhouse in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Is within you. If he who raised Christ from the dead dwells within you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body. So the word of God says, the Holy Spirit is within you. You've got to embrace that. The Bible says for believers, and they often misquote, it, it, it tells us very clear, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Many believers stop there. The Bible says there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. That's Romans 8 verse 1 and 2. It will do that for you. So the law of the spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So potentially you have the power to rise up with that truth and see the sicknesses, the issues eradicated and hopeless situations turned around. Your family members change simply because of your prayers. Doesn't the word of God says he will save them through the cleansiness of your hands? So the word of God tells us. So we've got to start to embrace kingdom culture and be more than we are right now. It's not about coming to church just on a Sunday morning, enjoying a few songs, saying, oh, that sermon was okay, yeah, and critiquing it and then going home. You're going to be living the life. Live for the Lord Jesus Christ every moment of the day. Be different than you've been before. Why settle for what you're settling for? You can be living lower standard than what God has for you. He has great things in store for you. But if you know this culture around us, all its views, all its ideas, everything that's embracing, these things that our culture today in the UK embraces that 20 years ago it never embraced. And they're not to benefit us, folks. We've got to start to embrace the things of God and allow Him to change our life in a great way. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, 
it starts to change you. Timidity goals, fear goals, a boldness goals. Why some of you can't even pray aloud in a meeting? Lift your hands up in a meeting. Why not a person in a football match today when Manchester United score <laughs> that we all lift their hands up? <laughs> and yet in church we have our hands in our pockets. We're looking around to him, he's watching us. Express yourself. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It gives you liberty to live there. I'm not embarrassed about Jesus Christ. I will talk about Jesus Christ in any company. Not embarrassed. To the man who's there, I don't think I need to be quiet here because you know me. I ain't bothered. I ain't not bothered if I'm on the street and I see family members or neighbours or anything around. I had a man in the gym, he, he came up to me and he said, uh, Hey, I saw you preaching on the streets in Middleton. So, am I embarrassed about that? I'm not. It gives me the opportunity just to talk to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And when he tells me he's got a bit of a frozen shoulder or anything like that, we're in the gym. I just said, I'll pray for you right now. I'll pray for him. And God moves. You know what they all say? I've noticed them. They all come back and say to him, my shoulder's all right now. I think I've worked it off. They don't do it. <laughs> One man told me he run off his issue after they prayed for him. And I said, come on. You know I pray for you, and you know that's why you, you, you're okay. But it gives you the opportunity to share. So even in that environment, I will pray for them and talk to them. Not bothered if other people are listening in. The more the merrier. If you listen in, they hear something of the truth of God's word. But I will back it up. I don't care where they are. And I'll say, I'll pray for you right now. And I'll pray for them. And God will start to touch their lives. He's a miracle working God. He wants us to embrace that type of culture. The early church embraced that. They lived sold out for the Lord Jesus Christ. They promoted the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with a demonstration of the power of God to change lives. Why do we think that the enemy has more power to hold a person down than God has to raise them up? God has more power to raise them up and he wants to raise you up so you can embrace that, that type of life. We're going to pray right now. You know, if there's sickness in your body, we'll pray for you. It will move you. You're suffering from depressions, anxiety, nervousness. He will start to deal with those areas of your life. If you're the person that I'm speaking about, maybe more than one, you know that has got scalp issues, skin tags on your body. God's interested in everything that affects your life. The miracle work of God. I knew a lady, you know, who came to us and uh, she was suffering from cancer. And she said, oh, when I was young, they used to have really nice curly hair. She said, I'd like you to pray that when my hair grows back, it's all nice and curly. <laughs> and I prayed for her, and when I saw her again, she had a full head of hair, all wavy, all curly, because of the presence of God. So mm -hmm. God will do. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle work. God is concerned about the things that concern you. Mm -hmm. So let's pray right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I just simply pray that as a people of God, we will start to embrace kingdom culture in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we will live that life that is worthy of the calling, that, Father God, we will be everything that you have called us to be, that we would not be influenced by things around us, but will be influenced by your Spirit in the powerful name of Jesus. And, Father, I pray that we would use the power of influence that comes from your Holy Spirit to bring others into a knowledge of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You need prayer today?